Good morning and welcome to worship on this Labor Day weekend. I'm so grateful we have this opportunity to be here and to be together. So welcome. With a new month, we have a new focus. And so one of the things that I want to invite you to consider all September long, we actually have five Sundays in September, is how part of the growing in faith is something that we do together. And many of us over the years have had that opportunity to reflect on who is it or who are the people who've really helped kind of nurture and nourish your faith. I also want you to think about how is God inviting and asking and encouraging that to be you. When we grow in faith together, we need each other. We're going to hear um, about Peter again, round two with Peter. It's kind of a head whipping, what happened, Peter, um, text for this morning. But we're also going to hear um, the continuation of the 12th chapter of Romans, where Paul is writing about the Christian life. If you would like that chapter in its entirety, there's some copies on our little handout table back there of the message translation of the entire 12th chapter of Romans. And for myself, it's something that I keep getting different copies of. I'll put it in a journal, I'll put it in my Bible, because it's just not usually how my smallest, lowest self likes to respond to life, but it is absolutely an invitation to live differently, to live as one who knows that this following Jesus journey has a lot of ups and downs and in-betweens. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the sermon, but you'll notice a few things that are uh, different in our order of worship. So um, you'll see it on the screen. You might have a bulletin um, in your hand. And all of September, we're gonna invite you to consider also part of growing in faith together is how we're of service. Um, to God, to our neighbors, um, to our world. And so the back of your printed bulletin has some service, a service schedule. But I invite you now to stand as we begin with our confession and forgiveness. A welcome to those of us, you who are worshiping with us in Zoom as well. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross and the spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others harm we have caused known and unknown forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation forgive us when we turn away from you and our neighbor forgive us lead us back to you and set us on the path in the name of jesus christ our savior amen beloved in christ god's this stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you all are already and always are forgiven. Amen. In our opening hymn, which we're using a, a, a version of the Kyrie, and it's the liturgical symbol the new hymnal setting eight. Thank you. 
your son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us the strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from Romans, the 12th chapter. Listen for the word of God. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on to dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves and fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. Word of God, word of life. I'd like to invite you children who want to come forward for our children's message. Come have a seat up here to see what I've got in this bag. Thank you, Elon. I appreciate the support. So, um, one of the things I'm going to share first, you know, we take a noisy offering and we finally put it in better print so you can see all the generosity of this congregation. And last month, for our um, one of our local food bank banks, we collected. Can you read what that number is? Up about here, Eli. One hundred ninety-one dollars and eighty cents. That's almost two hundred dollars. That was great generosity. But now you're going to see a little logo up there, and that's for a new um, organization who we are going to support this month with our Change for Change. Now, this is, I think, beyond our children's message, so we need help from the congregation. Who knows the definition of metal with a double T, L-E? Gumption. Kind of. Kind of. I had to write it down. Anyone else? Perseverance. Perseverance. Mm-hmm. So the actual definition, because I kept having to, you know, write it correctly, is a person's ability to cope with difficulties or to, to face a demanding situation in a spirited and resilient way. We hope to share with you in worship a video of this great organization who use medals um, that people have won in long distance running or triathlons to acknowledge um, people who really are coping with difficulties in demanding situations, often cancer patients, but also uh, healthcare workers. But I didn't bring a medal in this box, in this bag. I don't think I have it here. Wait, let's just have, why don't you just lift it up? Wanna lift it up? Just feel it? You wanna try losing? Lifting it up? It's heavy, right? It's heavy. 
But look at this. It's a, a rock. But this is, this is a really special rock. Actually, we have moved this rock. We have had this rock in our yard in some place since 2014. Nine years. Looks like an everyday, ordinary rock until I turn it around. What does that look like it has right in the middle? It has a cross right in the middle. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if you can see that back there, but this rock, it sits usually out in our front. It just has this beautiful cross right in the middle. We're gonna hear well, about Peter, who was given the name Peter, which means like the rock. And he was the rock, that foundation, his declaration of faith, Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God, was the cornerstone of faith. But if this rock just looked like this, you'd have no idea, would you? You'd think, why would you move that rock from house to house, different places in your yard, until you saw it this way? And we're going to hear Jesus talk about taking up your cross and following him. The medals for medals are given to people who take to heart that in suffering, in hardship, others can be with us. We can grow in faith together even when things are really hard and that others can love, encourage, and support us. So you're gonna hear a little bit more about that in the sermon, but maybe you'll find a special rock somewhere. Maybe you'll keep your eyes out because I had to ask Dan, I couldn't remember where we got this rock, but that's how I knew what year it was. A friend of his was working at this campground and he saw it and he gave that to us as a gift. So a long, long time ago. So it makes a difference by their generosity. So let's put our hands out. Please repeat after me as we put our as we pray together. Dear God, help us to follow where Jesus leads. Help us have metal to persevere, to withstand. To be, to be courageous and resilient, and resilient. Especially, especially when things are hard. Things are In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name Amen. 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 I invite you to grab a can if you want to help with our children's noisy offering. That'll be awesome. And it's going to go to Metals for Metal.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block for me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, guide the meditations of our hearts and minds that we would be open to receive the word you have for each one of us. Give us metal that we would courageously go where you are leading, especially in those times where it's painful or difficult or challenging or unclear. Help us to rely upon you and your strength. We ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. As I said briefly in the children's message, this is a head-whipping text. It was just last week in Matthew's Gospel, the same chapter, 16, that we heard Jesus say, Peter, you are the rock. On you, I will build this church. And now it gets hard. Who can't show up for the happy times? But the challenges, that's what we hear here. Jesus then, when Peter wants to deny or forbid him, God forbid that there should be pain or suffering or death. Jesus identifies Peter, who at one point was a stepping stone, as a stumbling block. I hope this actually gives you some comfort. Peter, just like you, just like me, our human condition where we want to, we hope to, we try to, be those followers of Jesus, but we fail, and we falter, and we fall. But that does not stop the power of God alive and at work in the world and in our lives. We've carried that rock around for a long time. And actually, there's a big rock project going on in our front yard right now. We have lots and lots and lots of rocks. And they're being moved from one part of the yard to the other. Dan and I are teasing that he goes out to the quarry every morning before it gets too warm, as he seems to just move from one rock pile of rock to another place. And I'm that person. I don't know about any of you. Dan is not, but I am. I can't see it until it's done. 
I'm the person who, if there's going to be some remodeling, I need a cutout. I need the cardboard cutout because my mind can't imagine what it's going to look like. And I think that's how Peter was. He couldn't imagine that this Jesus who has done these marvelous, miraculous, amazing things could also be the one who would suffer and die on the cross because Peter's vision was limited to what was just right in front of him. This is part of why we need to grow in faith together. It's part of why we need to keep revisiting these scriptural texts. It's part of why we need these directions found in the 12th chapter of Romans from Paul. Because even those people who have that skill and that insight to see what rocks will look like when they're moved to a new place, who can imagine what the kitchen remodel looks like before a single hammer has been taken out, they too need to be reminded and encouraged and remember that this journey of following Jesus will take us again and again into the very heart of the challenge of his life. Jesus did not invite his disciples to be bystanders. He invited them into the arena. He invited them to be part of his healing. Remember how he sends them out two by two? He sends them out to heal, to forgive sins. And what is part of what happens when that happens? Do you remember that part of the story where they come back bitter that people were doing things in Jesus' name who weren't them? Yeah, just like us. Our limited vision. Our way of thinking, if it's not my way, I can't imagine God could do it. Stumbling blocks. But those same stumbling blocks can be turned in to stepping stones. Sometimes we have those moments. We don't always know it while it's occurring, but it'll be something that for us might last a lifetime, or at least a very, very long time. That's part of why Romans, the 12th chapter from the message translation became so powerful for me because it came to me in the dark of night when I couldn't sleep. Some of you have heard me share this time and time again, but I've gotten to revisit it out of my own stumbling around in the dark. The invitation to take my everyday ordinary life and place it before God as an offering to trust that God can change us from the inside out, to keep learning how to recognize what God wants from us, and then quickly do it. When we come to the time in our worship service this morning for our God sightings, we're going to mix it up just a little bit. You'll hear about it then. But one of the things I'd like you to consider in preparation for that, who? Who shared the good news to you, with you? Who gave you comfort or consolation in a challenging or a difficult time? Who helped you grow in your faith? I shared a little bit about it last week, that part of the power of followers of Jesus is we can trust that even when it seems like all is lost and the darkness is so dark and there is no way out, we deeply trust that Jesus is with us. See, that's where Peter hadn't grown in his faith in that way yet. I can't remember, I think, who that team is. Oh, I should have looked it up. Who's the team who lost? And, oh, I know one team who lost and lost and lost and lost during the football season. My first husband was a great fan of the New Orleans Saints. Man, they were just the biggest losers for the longest time. But he loved them. He loved them when they lost, and then they won. And let me just tell you, those fans who were there when they were losers were a little bit bitter about the new fans when they became winners. How do you stick with your team 
with the ups and the downs and the in-betweens, and that's just this. But how about with your friends? How about with your family? How about for us right now as a country in a deeply divided time? How do we love one another in the midst of our differences? How do we trust that God will guide us and provide for us? And we keep working on that path that may take us into some of the deepest darkness and suffering. The Christian life invites us not just to that Super Bowl moments, but to when the Savior is barely filled. The life of Jesus invites us to sit in silence with others when they're in discomfort and pain, not needing to have some cheery platitude because we can trust God's power and presence in the brokenness. The Christian life invites us to identify our gifts, to use them not for our own sake, but for the sake of the world. These words from Romans, the 12th chapter, especially came to me in these past couple of years. And some of you know I was involved in a pretty acrimonious lawsuit. And just yesterday, on this beloved aunt's 92nd birthday, there I am in the heat of yoga. Some of you think I'm just crazy, and that's okay. I totally get it. Love to be in that room. All that humidity, because you know what it does for a crazy person like me, whose brain is very hard to turn it off. All you do is stay in the room and breathe. That's it. Like, you've accomplished that hot yoga. Okay? And somehow, on my aunt's 92nd birthday, several months after this acrimonious lawsuit has been resolved, after I had shredded all those legal papers, after I had deleted the contacts of these people who have treated me poorly from my phone, my two cousins' names come to mind. And then, the yoga instructor prompts about love in the midst of difficulty. And my heart heard something my mind could not comprehend. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on to dear life. Good. The initial of one of my Zen is K. Somehow it just came to me, and then I thought, if I put an L, if I put between those, it would be MLK. And I love Martin Luther King. <laughs> I, you know, these are the crazy things when you're just trying to hold a pose and it's 100 degrees and 90% humidity. But there was something else that happened, and it took my breath away is I heard the directions to love or hate. To not hold on to bitterness or resentment, because this is a great thing I heard this summer. You know, there's lots of great, you know, quotes about resentment. Resentment is like chain smoking hate and hoping the other person dies. Don't chain smoke hate. Love from the center of who you are. Know that you will fall and you will fall. You will fail. Your faith will falter. You'll have a moment of great clarity as I did, and then I might turn around and become bitter again. And trust love for me and all of that and invitation into those places where there's pain and there's 
and there is heartache, deeply trusting that Jesus knows and is there too. Amen. Our hymn of the day is on your screen, but if you, the screen's hard to read, there was a white handout. And this is a great hymn about following Jesus. I invite you to stand as we sing together. yourselves. Hopefully there's more than just one screen of you, but I'm going to come over and add some things um, to the chat too. But what I'm going to invite you to do is choose what's called, a, let me tell, tell me if this is right, an elbow partner. I didn't know what an elbow partner is. Do you know what an elbow partner is? And you go to elementary school around the elbow partner. And if it's, you're the person you're here with, that's great, but you can move a chair. But I want to invite everyone who's here to find an elbow partner someone you're going to share with about somebody else who's helped share that message of Jesus with you. Some of you are sitting by yourselves, you might need to move. This is a congregation where you can move out of your seat. Some of you totally hate this. You can talk to the other person who also may hate it right next to you about that. Great. Find an elbow partner. We're going to have about three or four minutes for this. Um, to share this. So I just encourage you to do that. And I'm going to come over and share with the folks in Zoom. So if our technology people, if you want to find an elbow partner, um, you can do that as well. So you're going to just share a little bit about somebody who has helped you grow in your faith. Simple. Just share with someone. If they already know your story, you can move a different seat or share with someone, someone who grows in faith. So. So we're going to share with those two guys, two?
hopefully you all got a chance to see something, uh, share a little bit about uh, and faith together. One of the exciting things that's um, going to start um, next week is we're going to have um, during vacation hours, so our schedule um, mixes up next week a little bit, 8 o'clock, a very um, simple liturgical, uh, no music, uh, spoken with a sermon, 8 o'clock service, and then we'll have um, time at 9 o'clock where it can be coffee hour, you, we don't, I don't know how soon adult Bible study will that confirmation Sunday school um, choir will be at the o'clock hour, but next week at the nine o'clock hour, I hope you'll have ways to participate in our life together. And one of them that I sent out yesterday, uh, put some words around this, is there's something that happens when you eat together. So I want to be part of a um, dining. And it might even be like maybe you have young kiddos and you're like, I just need to be like outdoors or we need to be at a playland, right? We could, that's dining. That's a thing, right? Or maybe for someone who's a morning person, like consider what it's like. Jesus knew the power of eating together. And so I just hope you'll consider if that's something um, you might want to participate in, um, doing that. But there's so many ways that we get to meet people and be of service to people, um, share our lives and things that are important to us. So you'll come um, next Sunday at 9 o'clock hour, hopefully, and check out all those ways, really great things that people have offered up as a result of our survey, things that they're interested in. Um, in sharing, and we'll have some of those opportunities that are not just Sunday morning worship to get to know one another and be together. Like it just ends up that this congregation, the 60 people who did the survey, they like swimming and they like playing games. Okay? But games needs a whole thing because I know just by a raise of hands, how many of you like playing um, Settlers of Catan? Okay, I'm 100% out on that. Like, it's too hard, takes too long. But look at that, did you know that about each other? This is gonna be great. People who like to play that game, who think worship is long, they got nothing on it. Nuh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> I don't care, you can be at a Baptist service for three hours, said it was a lot longer than that. But we'll find ways, right, to be um, in this shared life together, right? Because some people like those really fun, easy games, you know, like Candyland. <laughs> you know, Candyland is a great, I thought it's a great, it's a great game for children and disappointment. You will be taken back. It's like a cross, you live there with them, it's okay. There'll be another challenge. Get right back to the end. Okay, we're going to continue our worship with our prayers of the people. So I invite you to stand as you're able, and you'll see that there's a new refrain for our prayers. Each petition ends with, merciful God, to which the congregation's response is, Receive our prayer. Remember the caring and generous works of God. We pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbor. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Merciful God, God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Merciful God. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care, overcome evil in all nations, and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Merciful God. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of ruthlessness. 
give endurance to workers who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. We lift up the particular concerns of our own community today as we pray for Barb, Eric, and Brenna. We lift up prayers for Marlene and Lee, Angie and Ketten, Pastor Caitlin and Pastor Andrea, Pastor Mark and Kirsten, for Jill, Jack, Mandy, the Smith family, Bob, Janae. We pray for Randy and Carol, for Mike and Cheryl, for Andrew and the Seidel family, and those we now name either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart. We're trusting in your compassion, made known through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name we pray, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. At this time, our ushers will receive our offering. Thank you for your generosity, which is what makes our ministry possible. And um, if you have a check, just maybe raise your hand too so our ushers can see if you actually have a physical offering. And thank you for your many online and um, in kind donations as well. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. 
We join together in praying that prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. If you're comfortable, I invite you to join hands with someone nearby, but be true to yourself. But we are united as one as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you who are joining us on Zoom or later are watching uh, this recorded, hear these words of Jesus to you. This is my body given for you. Take and eat. And again, this is my blood shed for you. Take and drink. For everyone else who is here gathered, if you didn't have a communion kit um, at your seat, our ushers will escort you forward. All of our wafers are gluten free. The dark colored cups with red are the wine and the yellow um, is the white grape juice. Come taste and see the goodness of the Lord as we join in the power of a meal shared. Mm -hmm.
We invite you to stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food. Send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out, and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. If you can stay up a few minutes today um, after worship for some um, coffee or iced tea uh, or some snacks, we have them in the inspiration room. It's just a time maybe to make a new friend or um, share a little bit more about somebody who's um, been with you on your faith journey. Um, we'd love to have you um, stay for that. Following um, the coffee time, we'll have the grief group. So the grief group will probably meet in the adult Sunday school classroom. Um, so we can do that while um, coffee's being cleaned up. And as I shared earlier, ministry fair um, next Sunday at nine o'clock. But at eight o'clock, we'll have a worship service. Um, and then again, 10 o'clock, um, be plugged in, be connected in whatever way you can. And then at camp, and in other youth ministries, we usually talk about this, is there's your comfort zone. We're trying to help you with your comfort zone when it comes to some worship things, we're working on it. But don't be afraid of your stretch zone, especially with um, service too. We don't want you to be in your panic zone. No, no good things happen when you're in your panic zone. But consider stretching. I'm actually gonna um, stretch myself. I'm volunteering next Saturday at the Habitat for Humanity Restore Store. You know, I don't usually do a lot of jo jobs where they say, wear closed toed shoes. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what that means. But I think there's six other volunteer spots on next Saturday, 10 to 2, if anyone wants to be there. Because then I can at least have someone with me. It helped my stretch zone be a little more comfort zone. So you never know when that's you. Consider ways that you might um, serve in this month of September. Um, we'll keep putting out lots of opportunities um, for that. But now take to heart these words of blessing. They're old and so familiar for many. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with all the favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our closing hymn is, What is the World Like? You can see it on the screen or on the back of the bulletin.